No, maybe so. <laughs> You're too funny. I'm going to show all the time. It's a show me state. And what is the show me state? Missouri. Missouri. Yeah. We're not the show me state. <laughs> We're the Big Apple. Yep. Except I don't know where that came from because other than there's a lot of apple orchards, but Washington apple has better apples than we do, actually, I think. Okay, well, well, let's talk because yesterday I forgot to say where I was from and Doyle pointed it out. I got distracted with my wood chips. Okay. Hi everyone, it's Nona Grace. And you got to enjoy a little chit chat before this video because that's what happens when we sit down. We do a little extra chit chat and sometimes there's good stuff said and sometimes not so good stuff said. Um, you just forgot something too. I just forgot. Oh, I just forgot again. <laughs> Oh, Doyle, you're going to really love this one. Well, anyways, hi, I'm Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. There we go. I am from the Big Apple, but not the Big Apple. I live in the in the countryside of the Big Apple. The Big Apple is... We live in the leaves. Yeah, we live in the leaves or the small branches, the little tiny branches that branch off from the Big Apple. But uh, today I wanted to show you, I've been... Remember I showed you the washcloth that I crocheted? Well... I used to make a lot of washcloths, but I always knitted them. This is a knitted washcloth, and this is a knitted washcloth, and this one is knitted because I ran out of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a two-tone, and this is one that was with all of the colors, and I love making these. They're so soft. Um, the first, the one that I crocheted, that was the first time I'd ever crocheted a washcloth. This is knitted. I like knitting. And I like crocheting better because if you make a mistake with knitting, you have to start all over again. Which, today I've learned that I'm started all over again. I'm trying to make a Tunisian sha crocheted shaker washcloth, dishcloth, which is, it's, it's like this. This is what it looks like. It's going to be a pretty washcloth or dishcloth or whatever thing. And... Um, the lady that's showing how to do it, <clears throat> she's using a regular crochet hook, but she said you can use the Tunisian hook, which is one of these, which is a long hook, but I've got actually a smaller size. I think she used a, a bigger size. This is a 9, and she used more like 11, I think, or something. I don't know. Bigger, A bigger hook. But I don't have a bigger hook. I only have this one. So this is the one I'm going to be using, and it's and it's like... They're like a crochet hook, if you can see the ends, but it's like a knitting needle with the thing on the end also. I think it's it's focused. I think so. I think you could see it. Jim told me today, too, when he, he was mowing the lawn today, even though our yard is really wet, it, the grass with all that rain, you, you've seen the rain, the lovely rain, and we have rain again today, but it's a nice little drizzle kind of rain. Sprinkle. Sprinkle. Yeah, it's a nice rain. The, the chickens were outside enjoying it. They were eating the worms. But in, anyways, he told me while he was mowing, he looked in the box where the bluebirds are. I have four eggs. Four bluebird eggs. Last year I had some bluebirds. Mm -hmm. I think we had three or four. I think there was four I last there year. Was four last year. Too. And they, they hatched and blew, blew flew away, not they didn't blow away. <laughs> they flew away. And the bluebird people come to check our, our boxes because we're on the bluebird trail. And um, I don't know if you know it, but bluebirds, you can only have a box, one, one, you can, well, we have two boxes, so they can choose which box they want. But you have to be an acre away from the next box because bluebirds are very territorial. They will um, attack other bluebirds. In fact, sometimes um, they see their own reflection in the barn window and they will attack that bluebird that's in that window. They try to anyways. They were almost extinct here in New York State for a yeah, long time. That's why they set up the bluebird trail to try to encourage bluebirds. But they have to be an acre apart. Because a lot of people would say, gee, I'd like to have a... Um, 
many boxes, a lot of boxes. You can't have a lot of boxes because the bluebirds will destroy each other. The house wrens will destroy the bluebirds too. They will build their nest right on top of the poor little bluebirds and kill the babies and put their babies in that in a nest that they build on top. Now the bluebird nest is very soft, made with um, nice materials. I'm sure they enjoy Grass the feathers. I'm sure they enjoy the feathers that are coming off the chickens. <laughs> And um, the house wren will build them out of twigs. So if you see in your bluebird box, if you see twigs, take them out because they will kill the bluebird. You don't want those to be having hatching babies. And um, I will also, I'm going to put that in right here because yesterday I forgot to say where I was putting stuff in. Well, I'm going to put that in right here, the little um, video of Emma's babies. I got to see all four. That's how many she has, just four. Mm. I wanted to check. There's the babies. She got four. She ended up getting two with the real dark, one with the light, and one real black one. Look at you, you beauties. You're so darn cute. Yes, Emma. And the other one that she was sitting on, I just got rid of it. It was an empty egg. There was nothing in it. But there's four babies. Oh, I know, Emma. I will get you some fresh water, too, in a minute. Because you're going to need that. Four little ones. You're all hiding. You're all going underneath Mama now. Okay. Now, aren't they the cutest little things? Now, she did have five eggs. There was another egg that was in there, but I didn't put it in there. The egg that was put in there was a white egg, and my white, my hen that lays the white eggs hasn't laid any in a long time because I was just looking at my cartons of, of eggs because I date them, and I only have the brown and the blue and the green colored eggs. I don't have any white eggs, so it must be she's not laying any eggs lately. I wonder if she's all done laying, because some hens will lay only a couple of years, and then they just seem to stop. Whereas my buffs are laying, and they're they're pretty old, but they keep laying eggs. So as long as they keep laying eggs, they're, they're happy little girls. They'll stay forever, the buffs. They only have four left. I started out with six. One died at the hands or the mouth of another bird that thought it was a rooster but it was a hen but a rooster hen I don't know what it was it was mixed up and it killed one of my buffs then the other buff that I don't have anymore that was Louise this rooster for some reason didn't like her so she went to live at my brother's so I only have four buffs and they were my original birds from when I started I started out with six little hens six little chicks that were hens and I have now, I have 10 hens, seven babies from Dorothy, two babies from, or, yeah, from Dorothy, mm -hmm. two babies from Silver Fox, and four babies from Emma. And the rooster that I have was one of Emma's babies. So this will be interesting. There's going to be some inbreeding going on. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> this is sad. But. He was a nice rooster, so that's why he got to stay. He wasn't super big. I don't like the real big. My other roosters were like Americana-sized roosters, which are big, heavy roosters. And um, they're too hard on the girls' feathers, and I don't want their feathers worn out. It's They do have a little bit of feathers missing from the back of their heads, but I expect that from any rooster because the rooster pins them down is what he does. But they don't need to wear the feathers off their shoulders and backs and make that raw. But um, this one hasn't done that so far. And he, he, um, you can tell which birds he likes the most because they have the feathers missing from the head. Now the little brown one that follows him everywhere, I don't think he likes her. But she likes him. And she follows him. If he walks up towards the pine tree... She follows right along with him. If he comes back, she follows him. If he goes inside, she follows him. She's like one of these girls that it's like a, the bands that have the... Groupie. Groupies, yes. yes. 
groupies. You know, it sounded funny when you said groupie. <laughs> I don't know. It didn't sound like a word. I don't know what it sounded like. But yeah, she's like a groupie that likes to follow the the stars of the band. Well, that's all I've got to tell you today. I guess there's nothing else. It did rain a little bit, and I think I already told you that. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll just say goodbye, and I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.